All right. Now we're on the uh, CTS site briefing, and uh, just to tell the ground rules again, so we'll understand, so everybody will be on the same page. What we're going. Uh, the answer I'll just yes. tell you this, I know they're guilty. At the time, they didn't know it was illegal. It was not illegal when they do it. Norman Lewis was a friend of mine. Another person was a good friend of mine. Now, Norman died young, and probably from what he got out there. Norman passed away a couple of years ago. And and they they dumped it, because when this first came up, I asked, what you people do out there? They said, yeah, we did. But it wasn't illegal at the time, what, what they were saying, and it wasn't, evidently. But it is now, it, and they shouldn't be the ones to clean it up. They shouldn't be smart enough to know it was illegal in. That stuff they ain't going to help the ground. Uh, our laws we just need to stay on them, my friend, and get it done. Get it done. Our laws do not distinguish whether it was okay to dump it in the past or not. They have to clean it up. know they're guilty. At the time, they didn't know it was illegal. It was not illegal when they do it. Norman Lewis was a friend of mine. Another person was a good friend of mine. Now, Norman died young, and probably from what he got out there. Norman passed away a couple of years ago. And and they they dumped it, because when this first came up, I asked, what you people do out there? They said, yeah, we did. My name's Jean Harding. And you worked at CTS? From July the 1st, 1963 to September of 1986. Before that, that there were roads that were cut in beside the plant? Oh, it... yeah. It went up on up in there where that house was at. So the house was up in that area? It was up in behind the plant. So do you think that they would get to it by taking those dirt roads? That's how they got to pick up the barrels. Yeah. They okay, took so a they... truck up there. And picked up the barrels and loaded it on the back of a truck and then they they'd take a forklift up there and load it with a forklift on the back of that truck um and um you were talking about some of the spent or dirty uh chemicals after they got finished using them when after the after the process got dirty and everything they would take it out there and pour it on the ground it was supposed to go in a drain but it Part of the time it went on the drain, part of the time it went on the ground. Did, did you see them? Oh, yeah. I've seen them do that. Okay. And this was the TCE? Uh-huh. And they were pouring it onto on the ground? On the ground. Okay. Right smack dab on the ground. And you you said you were there uh, July, um, you said you were 19? 63, and I was 19 years old. So July 1963 to July 1986. So September. September 96, sorry. 86. So just uh, just over twenty three years, mm -hmm. and um, when they were pouring that, was that more or less throughout your career there? Did you? Well, see, I didn't work in that area the whole time, so maybe I worked in there maybe two or three years, and they were pouring it and had been for a long time, and they had rotten barrels sitting all over the hill. They even had a house that used to set up behind CTS, and they had barrels all over the porch and everywhere else up there. Is that what they called the uh, dog lot? Yeah. That's what they called the dog lot? Mm-hmm. That it was, was up on that hill behind the plant where there's houses sitting now. Yeah, didn't I, did you? Uh, my name is Jim Bates, and I, I work in the Superfund section with Bruce. Uh, my job is one to coordinate with EPA both on their emergency removal actions and on their efforts to get sites qualified for the federal cleanup program. Um, known impacts and exposures that can be uh, attributed to the site <coughs> firmly at this point are few. The vapor... Uh. The soil exposure pathway, it, it rides on a, a distance from residences, so we sit there with a the compass and draw circles around every house and see if the impacted soils is within 200 feet of houses, you know. So we've, we, every time we've sampled, the sampling plan has been strategically designed with that in mind, trying to get, get another hook in here. Our sampling of the springs up on the CTS 
subdivision was aimed at, at that very issue of the past dumping history up on that hillside. Given that that hillside was so heavily landscaped, we, we took a few soil samples where we thought of had a fighting chance, but we chose rather to put our resources into lots of spring and seep samples during the wet season. And we made extra trips up there to catch rain events <coughs> to see if we could catch something seeping on that hillside. So we, we are aware of that past dumping history and we've, we, we strategized a lot to try to catch a whiff up there, but it's difficult, you know, the way that place has been re-landscaped. <coughs> but we will continue to reiterate Carolyn and I, and prior to that, Jennifer and, and Harry Zinn, I don't know if you've men mentioned him, we, we have been beaten against that 28.5 boundary about five times, you know, and we, we've got it firmly in mind. At the same time, all of this money that's getting spent, we want to make sure that it leaves Bruce with the best information, like I say, to make that three million count. Okay. I appreciate that. Now, I said we'd end it. At sampling plan has been strategically designed with that in mind, trying to get, get another hook in here. Our sampling of the springs up on the CTS subdivision was aimed at, at that very issue of the past dumping history up on that hillside. Given that that hillside was so heavily landscaped, we, we took a few soil samples where we thought of had a fighting chance, but we chose rather to put our resources into lots of spring and seep samples during the wet season. And we made extra trips up there to catch rain events <coughs> to see if we could catch something seeping on that hillside. So we, we are aware of that past dumping history and we've, we, we strategized a lot to try to c catch a whiff up there, but it's difficult, you know, the way that the springs up on the CTS subdivision was aimed at, at that very issue of the past dumping history up on that hillside. Given that that hillside was so heavily landscaped, we, we took a few soil samples where we thought of had a fighting chance, but we chose rather to put our resources into lots of spring and seep samples during the wet season, and we made extra trips up there to catch rain events <coughs> to see if we could catch something seeping on that hillside. So we, we are aware of that past dumping history, and we've, we, we strategized a lot to try to catch a whiff up there, but it's difficult, you know, the way that place has been re-landscaped. So